Are you a Muslim? Yes, I am. Uh, not, not by practicing, but I'm born into it, but I don't. You know, I'm stuck because of the culture. So you believe in Islam or you don't? I believe that it is a book, uh, the Holy Quran. You believe the Holy Book is the Quran? Uh, yes. All right. What make you think it's holy? It references back and combination of the three religions together. I don't know you why your voice is clear. Do you have something over your microphone to change your voice? Not, not, uh, no. I'm using no more headphones. I'm not sure it was going on there. Because I have difficulty to understand. Can you hear me? Okay. Can you say again what yeah. you said about? Can, can you, you say me? again what you said about the Quran? It, it tries to combine uh, all the Abrahamic religions into one. Okay, the Abrahamic religion. I like that. Do Abraham kiss black stone? Yeah. The only thing that they said here is that Abraham went to the Kabla. Abraham, he uh, went to the Kabla. Uh, Abraham. Yeah, he... And what my father thought. Uh -huh. the, the, my father said there's a picture in the Kabla, there's a picture of Abraham, there's a picture of Mary and Jesus. This was the original Kabla. Oh, okay. But uh, is that the one in Mecca? They, they, they say yes. And they said for a long time. They kept the statue of Jesus and Mary inside the Kabla. After Muhammad passed away, they removed it. Okay, no problem. If we go with what you said, the Kaaba, according to Muslims, have 360 gods. So if there is some Christians, they have a picture of Abraham, that will not make Muhammad Abrahamic. Those are the Christians. What your prophet have to do with Abraham? Yeah. If you go, if you go, if this is true, this is what you are saying. But if you go and read in the Quran, yeah. it says in chapter 34, verse number 44, that the people of Mecca, they never receive any messenger and they never receive any books. So how Abraham, he was in the Kaaba and he was in Mecca with his son Ishmael. If the Quran says it clearly that none of the people of Mecca ever heard about God before, and they never have a messenger before. And the verse in the front of you, you see my screen? Hello? Yeah, I hear you. So there is no, there is no Abraham came to Mecca. Nobody came before Muhammad. Before Muhammad, do you see the word before? Nor sent to them yeah. before you, Muhammad, any warner. And they never receive any scriptures. So the Muslim, they lie, they say Muhammad family, they were Abrahamic, and Muhammad was Abrahamic, and Abraham was there. But this is contradiction for what the Quran is saying. So the Quran contradict the Quran. Did they receive books before Muhammad or not? The verse here says no. Did they receive a warner, a messenger before Muhammad or not? The verse here says no. So when, when the Quran says that Abraham and Ishmael, they were there, that is a contradiction for the Quran. And you said to me, this is a holy book. What kind of a holy book have such a stupid story, contradiction? Yeah. Yeah, what? This is, uh, I'm not, I, do not, I do not dispute. I'm not disputing this point at all. So do you agree this is a contradiction? 100%. I mean, it's written in the Quran. It's uh, not something. So how you say to me it, when you? It's there, it's but when you call me, you said to me the Quran is the holy scriptures. How it's holy, and this is. It, because I, it was said from the word of God, not the word of Allah. My friend, Allah is not even the name of your God. Allah, if you go to verse number one in the Quran, you will see. You know the chapter Al-Fatiha, right? You as a Muslim, you have to recite it every day, five times, correct? If you read with me here, it says, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Okay. The first word here is what? Allah. Do you see it? You see the word? Yeah. All right. 
What is the second one? It says Alhamdulillah. Where is Allah? Li lah. Li mean to. Lah is the name of your God. So Allah is two words. Yeah. Allah is two words. Al in the old Aramaic and even Hebrew is a word meaning God. That's why we say Daniel. Daniel. The old Hebrew says Ishmael, not Ismail. The old Hebrew says uh, Israel, not Israel. So the word Al, which means God, became in the new Hebrew, Il. So Allah is an old Aramaic name. Al, Lah. Al is a word meaning God. Lah mean or the name. Al in the Arabic today is used as a word meaning that. Like you say the house, the tree. But the origin of it, for this is an ancient name, al la god la So when you say to me, your God is Allah, I love, your God is the moon God. This is why you Muslims, when you fast, you have to wait for the crescent moon. Is that correct? Yes. Huh? Yes. What is the crescent moon have to do with Allah? We're not thought very. We're not thought very deeply. We don't have. Uh, I think Bible studies. We're told to accept as it is. And oh God knows. Yeah, but what do you think? Sometimes only Allah knows. But what do you think? You know, you're. You know. The, I've, I've been listening. Yeah. So I've been listening. I've been listening to you a lot, but the what what I'm having problems with is the Quran is not in chronological order. It's making me, uh, my understanding, it's not in chronological order. It's not written, it's not put in a way that it was done at the right time. It's all over the place. Yeah, this is because supposedly Muhammad is not a prophet. Because uh, if Muhammad is a prophet, and then Allah telling him about, and he is teaching him from zero, right? Because the Quran says Muhammad yeah. was not a believer. So Allah, if you want to teach Muhammad, he should start teaching him who is Adam first, and then who is Abraham, step by step, in order. But as you see, the same, I mean, the, the name of Abraham is all over. The name of Adam is all over. The story, there is no, there is no place for a story. That because Muhammad, he learned something, he sat with the Jews, he learned something, he make a verse about it. Hmm. The way I'm getting confused, is when when he first had the Quran re revealed to him, what was the time when he then knelt and worshipped the three daughters of Allah? What was the, the timing? How long? Well, it doesn't matter how much, but what we know that Muhammad, he was not a Muslim for 40 years. So all those years he was worshipping the daughters of Allah, he was worshipping Allah, and he was a pagan like the rest. And Muhammad, after that, he is still pagan. Right? So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, so when the Quran says that Muhammad, he do not know what is faith and he do not know what is book. So what was the religion of Muhammad? Paganism. And thus we have sent to you, O Muhammad, Ruhana, the Muslim translate the word Ruh has inspiration, which is very funny because Ruh means spirit. But anyway, of our command, you know not what is the book, nor what is faith. So Muhammad know what? He do not know even what is faith. He do not know anything about any book. So what was the religion of Muhammad? Pagan all his life. You know, in the cave with the Gabriel, his meeting when he appeared to him and choked him three times. 
this one is a uh, did he read the book at the end or not because I'm getting very confused there's so much to see that says he can't read and others says he, he has he did read it well uh, you know <clears throat> The, the, what, whatever the Muslim they say, the story does not make sense because why the angel, he says to him, read anyway if he did not give him a book? If there's no book... Yeah, what was, that? What was he reading? There's nothing to read. Yeah, so, the, 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 so if Muhammad saying, what I shall read, or Muhammad says, I cannot read, both does not make sense because the angel, he squeezed him three times. Why? Is he punishing him? Is that a reward? No. It's a punishment. So if the Muslims are trying to say to us, Muhammad is a fool, he could not understand what the angels are saying, using violence did not explain to Muhammad. He should explain to him why why he is squeezing him, why it's to the point he cannot breathe. So the whole story is stupid. In the top of that, why the angel is saying to him something which is supposedly coming from God and the first thing he says to him, read. I mean, he did not say first, Assalamu alaikum. I am the angel Jibreel sent to you by Allah. So how you go to a guy and he said to him, read right away without even saying, what happened to the greeting of Islam, which is stolen from Christianity and Judaism? Shalom to you. When the angels came to him, Mary, says to her, Shalom unto you, Mary. When the angel come to Muhammad, he squeeze him to the point he can't breathe. Okay, now the angel he squeeze him. Is Muhammad now able to understand? No. So why he squeeze him? Muslim can't answer. So the language is long, uh, wrong. The, the the command is wrong. The wisdom of of God is missing because God should not say something foolish. Don't Allah he knew that Muhammad would be confused. He would not understand. Shouldn't he say to him from the beginning something to guide him? Na read in the name of your Lord. Hold on. If Muhammad, as you see, he do not know what faith, he do not know what book, which means his God is not the true God. How you say to him, no, read in the name of your Lord? Who is his Lord? <laughs> this guy is speaking. Read in the name of your Lord. The Lord who taught everybody by pen, but Muhammad did not know how to write or to read. Allah, he taught everybody by the pen. Since when? Like did Allah, he write something to Adam? Ah. And if Allah is using the word pen in the ah. same chapter, in the same chapter, which now at the end of the Quran, how come he is giving such a command like the one who taught by the pen to someone who do not know how to hold the pen? Right? Yeah. But, uh, am I right to say from my understanding is M Musi is the only one that's ever received any writing from God directly? No, uh, according to the Quran, according to Muslims, Moses, he, re he, he received all the Torah written by Allah. But this is only for Moses. Is that, is that... And that's written in Allah? Huh? Written by Allah himself? Yes, that written, by, written Allah. by Allah himself. Written by Allah, exactly. Written by Allah. Allah. And, and so why, why Muhammad didn't do, receive the Quran like that? Is there a reason? Well, everything about Muhammad is weird. As an example... Allah, he gave Moses one Torah, correct? Yes. Muhammad, he received seven Quran. <laughs> so, why it's Allah, he gave him seven Quran? Huh? It's the interpretation. There's interp interpretation. He wanted that to be interpreted in different dialect. No, no, no. What, 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 what they like, those are people of Mecca. They are a small, tiny village. If the people of Mecca could not understand... One Quran, seven Quran will not make seven, five, seven dialect because those are the same people, same time. If it's seven dialect, should not be different. In the top of that, if you make seven Quran in seven dialect, you make more confusion, not the opposite. The Arab, I speak Arabic. The Arab is Arabic is my first language. I do not need seven dialect. They are confused. So 
This is not uh, the seven direct because, as an example, if you go and read Ibn Kathir, where it says, "Shamsu tajri li mustaqarin laha," the sun ran to its fixed course. According to Hafs, the sun ran to a fixed course. According to Ibn Mas'ud, the sun does not run to a fixed course. Is that a dialect? Or this is totally the opposite? This is not a dialect, but dialect. If the Muslim, they need seven Quran in a small, tiny land, have nothing but Arab, how the Quran can be published for the Persian, the Quran given to the Indian, who they have hundreds of languages. If the Arab themselves, they cannot understand. Like today we were talking about the, the, the satanic verses. Every Muslim giving his opinion and they are so confused. Okay, the Quran is given to you in seven dialects. Seven. All of them. Did they give you the answer for what happened? They will say no. All right. Yeah, I, I think that thing, the thing that hurt me the most in the was that when when Allah said uh, that Jesus died and went to him. In, uh, I said, that so, my is friend, a major I, aspect I'm, that trying, I, me. I, I'm trying to understand why you call me. So, are you still a Muslim or you are out of Islam? But I, I, I'm the confu I got a lot of confusion about my Quran and uh, so. Just, so I as the, okay, but I you agreed with family. me. All right, you agreed with me. Yeah. So I take what you yeah, are yeah. saying that you are saying you are out of Islam already. I, I can't trust it. I, I see so much things I can't believe it. That that is really something. Uh, God cannot make this much contradiction. So if that is what happened and I showed you, why you don't say I am out of Islam? Yeah, but what happens to me? Am I being pun going to be punished by some spirit or am I going to be killed? Because that's what he's telling me. Who? Well, it says I, I, I become, first I'm subject to be excommunicated and killed. Do you live in a Muslim country? Second, I... No. All right, so who's going to kill you? Nobody. Well, I make fun of their prophet. Let them come, come and kill me. I, 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 I call him all kind of names. Do they there? Let them come. You're a man. And even in Muslim countries, Muslims are living Islam. I can show you right now, tons of Muslim interviews, like in Egypt, making fun of the Quran. He questioned how valid the Quran is. Muslims, obviously, they are apostate. In the TV, there's tons of interview in the TV. Famous people making fun of the Quran, and nobody can refute them. Because I, I try to understand the Christianity it says, come as you are. What, what does it mean? How do I pray if I come as I am? Well, Christianity, it's, it, well, it's you know, you see, we, we don't take a statement of somebody says to me, he's a Christian, come as you are. You don't come as you are and you stay as you are. Jesus said, come, the tired one, come to me and I will comfort you. You are tired because of your sin. So you repent, you change your life by accepting Jesus, and then you are accepted. So Jesus, he accepts you. You are a sinner, he will forgive you. But Jesus will say to you, go and sin no more. Islam do the opposite. Islam encourage you to sin. For Allah forgive all kind of sin except shirk. So you can do whatever you want. Because you once brought up something hit me hard too, is that if if a person does not sin, Allah will remove him from the earth. Exactly. And that will sin. Because Allah is shaitan, obviously. That, yeah. Because yeah, it it, this, this hurt me a lot, because then I, I'm, I'm seeing the, the God of the Abraham seems to be a more loving, different than you know, what I'm seeing here. I wanted me to sin in order to keep me alive on this earth with the God, of, of, uh, the God of Abraham, he punished people. He destroyed them because of sin, not the opposite. The Muhammad saying, if you don't sin, Allah will destroy you. But the God of Abraham and the God of the Bible says it clearly. 
that nation been destroyed because of their sin, like Sodom and Gomorrah. And Muhammad, he copied the story. So how, how Allah, he will destroy those who don't commit sin. And Allah, in the same book, says, copying the story from the Bible about Sodom and Gomorrah. How the same stupid God, he copied the story from the Bible about Noah, which is obviously God destroyed them because they are sinning, not the opposite. And then he says, if you don't commit sin, I will destroy you and replace you with people who commit sin and ask for forgiveness. And that hadith here is showing that how stupid the author of the Quran is or the author of Islam is because Allah don't care if you commit sin or not. Allah care that you do need to ask for forgiveness. So the whole idea in Islam is to beg Allah. So if you don't commit sin, Allah will not like you because you are not begging for mercy. He's mentally ill. It's like you punish your son because he did not do anything wrong. Because if he did not do anything wrong, he will not beg you for forgiveness. That is sick. The yeah. Bible says, Jesus says, be holy like your father. Muhammad says, be sinner like Allah, otherwise he will destroy you. <laughs> so do you, do you consider yourself now yeah. out of Islam, my friend? Do you announce yourself that you are out of Islam? Yes, for, 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 for believing, to follow their ways, I, I'm going to be in trouble. A lot of us have given up on Islam, like, can we say, the Muti, the, the Mauti, and I mean, they, uh, we don't, our own conscience is against uh, this, this contract of prostitution. It's just not acceptable. Yeah. So what do you think about accepting Christianity as long as you decide to leave Islam, which I'm happy for you? I just don't know how to start and how to pray, and I, I want to be on a good, good path straight away. Is that if you understand? I'm, I'm nervous because uh, I'm going to live a different identity altogether. I'm gonna drop friends and family, and if I pray, I pray to Father, to God. So I pray. Because I'm not understanding the word Masih. What's it meaning? What's it about? It seems to be strong in the Judaism and Christianity. The Messiah but, is, yeah, the one, is the one is is the one who saves you from your sin. He take away your sin. He is a savior. That's what Yeshua means. So when you pray, Jesus said you say our Father, but in the same time, because when you pray to the to, to the Father, you're praying to the Messiah anyway. Jesus says, I and the Father are one. I am, I am with you all this time and you did not know me. I and the Father are one. So you pray to the Father, you ask Him for forgiveness, you ask Him for guidance, and you forgive those who trespass against you. So you can be forgiven for the trespass you did against other people. So Christianity focuses in very simple thing, love and forgiveness. So I, pray, so I don't pray directly to my dear, I pray... To the Father, I can call him Father. I'm allowed to call him Father. You can say to the Messiah, you can say to the Father, it doesn't matter because still you are believing in the true God. God is one. Trinity is about one God, not about three gods. So you pray to the Messiah, ask him for forgiveness. You pray to the Father. It's just the same. You do not have you are not praying to different gods, one God. In the same time, I don't, I don't, I don't, my friend, my friend, to make it simple for you. In Christianity, prayer is something come come from your heart. It's not something I can tell you what to say. So it has to be from your heart. Otherwise, repeating words, even if it's from the Bible, is meaningless. This is why prayer is a communication between you, your soul, and your creator. So it's not words you say specifically word by word. It's word you feel and then even if you don't use your lips you say them in your heart not necessarily by your lips that is a prayer something coming from your heart from the depth of you not someone says to you says this like say shahada given every day or do i am forgiven for a, a you pray is not about is not about every day is not about every hour is not every five seconds 
as I said you pray because you are praying from your heart so if you love the Lord and truly you love the Lord if you have a person you love do you remember him all the time yeah that's exactly what is a prayer for so I pray to my Lord I pray to my Lord all my day long doesn't mean I'm going in the street says I praise you God I praise you no everything I do I do according to what the Lord said to me this is the prayer prayer of an action not prayer of words so number one to, to, to pray to God is to do what God said because the Lord he says that many they worship me with their lips but not with their heart so I warn you in Christianity your lips doesn't count what count is your heart so you do not need to say words by your lips necessarily but you need to say it in your heart and number one heart prayer is the action of the heart this is why the Lord said from their fruits you shall know them so you see someone who need help you help you see an old man an old woman a child whatever you see you give support that's an that is an act of a prayer that is the real prayer and then you praise the Lord you praise the Lord by doing the action same time you can communicate with the Lord anytime I'm not going to tell you how many time as I said the more you are in love with the person the more you think about that person so if you are in love with the Lord I do not need to say to you five times six times seven times for your love will decide for your love is going to tell you when you remember him the more you remember the more you are in love the less you remember the less you care you understand me yeah so, so do I, is there white christians pray is, is they they face a particular direction that they kneel down about the, down how, how the prayer the, there's no direction you can sleep you can you can pray on your head in the pillow what does have to do with direction isn't it god is everywhere at least by knowledge what direction so if i turn my back now like is god in my back what does that mean if you put your head down if you put your head up if, what if you are a person who cannot even stand you are sick you pray doesn't matter it doesn't matter where you are you can remember the lord anywhere anyhow any when under the water above the water in the sky in the airplane what direction so my friend i advise you not to speak like muslims because still you are saying you are out of islam but you are thinking like a muslim you are worried about silly stuff god he don't care for your direction god he care for the direction of your action if your belief if your faith not the direction of your faith face so what the benefit of somebody he pray in direction but he rape women the true direction is how you direct your life to praise the lord by your action your prayer is your action yes. all right so so I, will, so I will ask you one more do you do you accept the Messiah to be your savior I do. I do. you do I really do I'm into that yeah. all right my friend I'm happy for you and okay. I encourage you to read the Bible because we don't want believers who don't know what they believe in I just want to try this path and I, I followed I follow my heart I feel something uh, I'm feeling something towards. Uh, I've left Islam, but I, I I want to I want to know as much as I can about Jesus and His promise to us. From what I hear from your word, educate yourself. The Lord He encouraged us to read and to learn, and we are not the same as Muslims. In chapter five, verse one hundred one says, "Ask no questions." Verse one hundred two says, "Because former generation." ask the same questions and they lost their faith in Christianity questions is required for a person who believe without understand what he believe he is not a believer 
All right? Okay, thank you very much. You're welcome, my friend. God bless I'll be you. Back. All right. I'll be yeah, I'll come back and tell me if you got the if you got the Bible and tell me what happened when you opened the book as you said. Tell me what chapter came in. I will. All right. Take care. God bless. I will. Thank you. Thank you. All right.